Ladies and gentlemen, Alex has officially returned to Modern Warfare 2. Well, at least kind of. He's back, but he's not back. He's missing. We're going to dive into that whole story in this video. But essentially, throughout the entire Modern Warfare 2 campaign, Alex was AWOL, and we didn't understand where he was. However, with the raid coming out yesterday, we get our first look at the answer to that is where is Alex and what has happened to him since Modern Warfare 2019. And the story-wise, it really does line up. However, there are a few different mysteries revolving around these cutscenes that we're going to dive into. And more specifically, we actually learned Alex's full name which is super weird. So essentially what we're going to do in this video is go through the cutscene within Modern Warfare 2's first raid, Adam Grad, and break down the individual parts relating to Alex and what it means for his story and the story of Modern Warfare 2 moving forward. Because keep in mind, every time a new raid comes out, it's going to be adding to this story. But for this one, this is the return of Alex. 48 hours ago, goat herders in the Satik Mountains discovered an entrance to what appeared to be an abandoned bunker dug into the hillside. Closer inspection determined the hatchway was an inlet to what could be a fortified Soviet-era fallout shelter. Or something more. Commander Farah Karim tasked a follow-on team of LF fighters led by Alex Keller, call sign Echo 31, to make entry. All right, so let's hold the phone right there. First things first, Echo 31 is Alex. We know this from Modern Warfare 2019, but we didn't know that his full name was Alex Keller. That is the first time we have ever seen a last name beside Alex. So that is some new news. Now, based off of the information that we got there is as of right now, we are in the Satik Mountains. Now, knowing this, it is a region that is not in the real world, so we don't really know exactly where it is. However, if we go ahead and have a look at the map that they provided us at the very beginning, we can see that it is in the north east of Yurzikstan. This also explains why Alex is there and why they are with LF forces. So first, let's go back into that, looking at what happened to Alex at the end of Modern Warfare 2019. In Modern Warfare 2019, after Hadir goes rogue, the American military classifies the Yurzikstan Liberation Forces, who Farah Karim is in charge of and is fighting against al Qatala, as a terrorist force. All of Task Force 141 finds this ridiculous, especially so Alex, because he's been working alongside Farah Karim. He then makes the decision to not take orders anymore, stop working for the CIA, and go and fight for the Yurzikstan Liberation Forces. In other words, LF forces. I'm tired of being told who my friends are. Alex, don't. I'm going back to Yurzikstan, staying with Fader's army. What you're doing is illegal. I'm pretty sure everything we do is illegal. Mm, only the good stuff. You got friends nearby? You too. Thank you. For everything. Well, it's not over yet. Trust me. I always have. Now, as we know in the rest of the campaign, at the very end, the building goes boom with Alex inside of it. We never see him die, so we expect that he didn't die. And as we find out later on in one of the Warzone seasons, he comes back, he is missing his leg. However, he has a prosthetic leg. We didn't know whether he was working with Task Force 141 or staying alongside Farah. And as it turns out, all this time, the reason why he wasn't in the campaign is because he was working with the Yurzikstan Liberation Forces. So it is clear from here that Farah and Alex are working with the Yurzikstan Liberation Forces when they get intel from Kate Laswell. Alex then, with Liberation Forces, goes into the mine. However, upon entering, loses contact. He and his team haven't been heard from since their initial infill, except for one update from Alex indicating that the tunnels were wider and more extensive than first reported. Again, that was his last and only message after confirming entrance. As of now, they're dark on comms. Farah has since sent scouts to hold the area. Price, Gaz, Farah, your mission is to locate Alex and the LF team and do a complete and thorough reconnaissance of the facility. If anyone or anything is down there, we need to know who and what. So this part of the story is relatively straightforward. As far as this goes, Alex goes in with the Urzikstan Liberation Forces while some other Liberation Forces stand watch outside of the bunker. When he goes in, he loses contact with Kate Laswell. Upon doing so, he is not heard from again. 48 hours later, Task Force 141 featuring Captain Price, Farah Karim, 
and Kyle Garrick, aka Gaz, go in to rescue the LF forces and of course Alex as well. The other part of the mission is a reconnaissance mission. They are getting sent in to see what is inside of the bunker and why Alex hasn't responded. When they get there, they find Alex's rope hanging into the bunker and they use it to go inside and track him down. So Captain Price, Farah, and Gaz all go into the bunker searching for Alex, doing the reconnaissance mission, and after going through all the trials and turbulations of the raid, this is what they end up finding. Uh, stay center. Gaz, check left. Roger. On it. Not like that. Same. Eyes front. Show your hands! Door! Door! They're all dead. Easy, they could be rigged. No wires. These two are clear. We're clear here. These are my soldiers. This is Arif. He volunteered to go in with Alex. No matter that was Alex. Echo 3 1, this is Kilo Actual. How copy? Echo 3 1, do you read? Roger, this is Bravo in a blind radio check. That's where are you getting this? Kate. We're too deep. No signals. Concrete and metal. Can't send or receive. Yeah, it's a silo, all right. Found power. Lights up. Soviet ICBM. Liquid fuel. Supersonic. Nuclear. Thermonuclear. Fifty years old. At least. You think there's a boy above that? Let's find out. So what is found inside the bunker is deceased LF forces with no sign of Alex. They do a radio check and they find that Echo 31 is not within radio range, nor can they reach Watcher, who is of course Kate Laswell. So they are radio silenced essentially. Upon turning on the lights, they find a Soviet era nuke. Now, they don't know if there's a warhead up there, if it is armed, or anything along those lines. Essentially, what this has done is set up the story moving forward. We don't know where Alex is. We know that he escaped the bunker because he is not with the other deceased forces. Now, the question is, is he captured and taken captive by maybe Vladimir Makarov? Is he been captured by Al-Qatala? Maybe Khalid al-Assad? At this point, we essentially don't know where Alex has been taken. However, we do know he is an integral part of the story. The other part of it is with the nuke. We don't know what Alcatala or the Russians are doing with their hands on these, nor if there is more missile silos or what they are planning to do with them. Essentially, this one was to set up the story moving forward. The questions that need to be answered, where are the nukes? What are they doing with them? Specifically, where or who has Alex. So that is it for the story for now. Where Alex is is still a mystery, but we know he is back in the story. That is what we'll find out throughout the rest of the raids, and I'm looking forward to them. If you enjoyed the story, you enjoyed the video, always appreciate it if you hit that like button. Let me know what you think or where Alex is down in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date on all my videos, make sure you subscribe, turn notifications on. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out. We are, we are reaching for